Welcome to Sec IRL. My name is Donna, and I woke up. Mmm, that's some good coffee. Now I am reading. I'm being healthy. Now I am working. Okay, time for bed. I'm going to Bali tomorrow. The amazing thing about YouTube is that anyone can upload a video. The bad thing about YouTube is that anyone can upload a video. It's estimated that about 400 hours of video are uploaded to the site every minute. Chances are a few hours of them are bad vlogs. Now, you may be thinking, wait a minute, bad vlog is subjective. Some people like Jake Paul while other people like Casey Neistat. That may be true, but I think people are interpreting that the wrong way. So the structure of a vlog is the thing that has objective truth to what's good or bad. Think of it like a box. There is a feature film box. There is a short film box. And each of those mediums has a certain structure that makes it those mediums. How someone reacts to the particular elements inside each structure is what's subjective. First, let's look at what makes a vlog good. Vlog is a combination of two words, video and blog. Blog, according to Merriam-Webster, is a website that contains online personal reflections, comments, and often hyperlinks, videos, and photographs provided by the writer. The key element here is personal reflections, which is an individual response to a particular stimulus where they convey their thoughts, feelings, and events, if that wasn't obvious already. So a vlog is the video version of that. Good vlogs follow the dramatic arc, which is the general formula for films or plays, but this can be also applied to video blogs. First is the exposition, which is the setting within the story. Casey Neistat often portrays his exposition with a short clip that grabs the viewer's attention. That's amazing. He then cuts to a clip of a montage of New York City, where he inserts text letting the viewer know when this was filmed and that this vlog is called 368. The next part of the dramatic arc is the rising action. And granted, vlogs aren't always action-packed, so we'll call it events that lead up to the climax. In this video, Nystat shaves, announces that his friend Dan is back from making his movie, and then meets up with Dan to discuss how the filming process went for that movie. After the rising action is the climax. This is the most important, intense part of the narrative. In a vlog, that's usually noted by the title. People are clicking because they want more information on the title. This is seen when Neistat calls his wife and they have a dispute about the time they have to film their podcast. Hi, I'm in a meeting. What's up? I thought we were shooting the podcast at 4.30. No, 5.15 I said. You said 4.30. I did not say 4.30. So 515? I will be there at 515. Right, we can't miss it this week. I am not gonna be late. I will be there at 515, make sure everything's set up. Then comes the falling action, where the conflict has been resolved and action is dying down. Falling action here is Nystad and his wife finishing the podcast. Finally, the resolution or conclusion, where all loose ends are tied. Tension that happened in the podcast between Nystad and his wife seems to have dissipated, and Dan appears back in the vlog to tell the viewers that they can see the story that he and Casey were discussing back in the rising action. Though Casey Nystad technically makes good vlogs, his vlogs aren't for everyone. As I previously stated, how one reacts to the content within the vlog structure is subjective. In other words, Casey's vlog structure is on point, but the elements within that structure don't interest everyone. These elements can include his personality, his story, his vlogging style. Another person who technically makes good vlogs is Trisha Paytas. Okay, I know what you're thinking. How dare you compare Casey Neistat to Trisha Paytas? Trisha Paytas is controversial. They don't even make the same type of vlog. But I purposely chose Trisha Paytas to show you that Different types of content can have the same vlog structure, but they can have different elements within that structure. And I wanted to show the vast difference of both. If you look at how her vlogs are structured, she too follows the dramatic arc. Exposition, relaxing day, spending her time with her mom. Rising action and going to the grocery store. Watching Jersey Shore. Talking about how going to Disneyland makes her feel like a kid. Climax, once again, is in the title of the video. David and Jason finally arrive at Trisha's house and 
they have a debate over whether confetti cake and vanilla cake are the same. Yeah, but I, I swear to God, it tastes different, right? No. You don't think it tastes different? Oh, confetti cake is different. It's not the same. No, I heard it's, it's vanilla. It's not. Who said that? Falling action. They call Liza to settle the debate. And the shocking news is confetti cake is not the same as vanilla cake. Resolution. Debate is settled. And they get off the phone. And so this is what I mean by subjective. How someone reacts to all the content in Trisha's vlogs are different. You either like it or you don't. But structurally, it is a good vlog. People don't go into a vlog and purposely follow the dramatic arc. It just happens to be that way because they're telling a story. And as I previously stated, the dramatic arc can be applied to plays or films, but what separates a vlog from a film is that a vlog has a creator to viewer relationship. The fourth wall is broken. And so a good vlog has both the dramatic arc and a personal connection, authenticity. A good vlog has both those and a bad vlog has only one of those elements or none. Here's what happens when the dramatic arc is missing. This is Sawyer Hartman's Through My Eyes. Essentially, it's a montage of how beautiful Bali is, but there is no storyline. It's amazingly shot, so it'd make a great cinematography reel, but it'd make a terrible vlog. And so to clear things up, Sawyer doesn't actually mean for this to be a vlog. It's a separate project he showcases to display his cinematography skills after some big trips. But I have seen some beginning vloggers use this as their form format for their vlog channel. They are then surprised at why their channel isn't growing. Here's what happens when you take away authenticity or a creator to viewer relationship. This is Tyler Oakley. He's an avid supporter of LGBTQ plus rights. Some of his most popular videos are him just speaking in front of a camera or videos that feature another person. It's clear to see why someone would be attracted to his content. He's outgoing, well-spoken, and the dynamic between him and his guests make for good entertainment. Oh my god, how much did I weigh? 7 pounds, 12 ounces. I look so thin. <laughs> That is the best I've ever looked. But when Tyler vlogs, all of this personality seems to disappear. In his series Going Home, the videos are polished and the quality is excellent. But there's something missing and his viewers seem to sense it too. I love Tyler Oakley, but I do agree with this to a certain level. A lot of his newer stuff, some old as well, is really creatively lacking. I feel like he knows his channel is dying and is trying to save it. He's not doing very well at it, but I feel like he's uninspired now as well. I personally enjoy Tyler's new series, Going Home, but it will never be as enjoyable for me as Shane Dawson's series. Not because it's not good, but because they are two different people with different ideas, motivations, and they honestly don't have much in common. So they will produce, think, and feel different ways. But I think Tyler needs to step up his game for sure. So the dramatic arc is present in the vlogs, but viewers are no longer seeing what made them subscribe to Tyler Oakley in the first place. So if this formula is so simple, why can't people change their content so they succeed? They can't tell their content needs improvement. Okay, real quick, let's do an experiment. On a scale of one to 10, how smart do you think you are compared to the rest of the world? One being very dumb and 10 being super genius. I guarantee that a lot of you probably said six and above. So a lot of you said you were above average, but we can't all be above average. This is known as illusory superiority. People often think they're better than some people in some areas. Think of the bad American Idol singer that walks in confidently in front of the judges, then gets so angry and confused at why they didn't get through to the next round. Living on a prayer. What the bloody <laughs> hell was that? Uh, yes or no, Simon? All right, no one in a million years is ever going to pay Not to hear you sing. But do you see, like, I did better, like, after just a few seconds like that. I no. can do a lot better. Maybe. You're going to do it again, aren't you? You could. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Maybe. You could be mine. Get out. Again. We can't judge our own work without any bias. So seeing if our own vlogs are bad is difficult. Creators often just get confused at why they're losing views and subscribers. The vlog has really been an important part of the millennium. We've constantly been bombarded by news, commercials, reality TV. We forget what humanity actually looks like, how someone a hundred miles away from us lives. And the vlog is an answer to that curiosity. The fourth wall is broken. 
And a good vlog isn't just something with beautiful imagery, beautiful people, a big budget, or cool destinations. A good vlog is a window to a moment in someone's life. That's the end of the video, and honestly, this was kind of my way of saying I made a bad vlog. Uh, I was supposed to be making this Q&A slash vlog type thing to answer some of your questions on Instagram, but I wasn't happy with the quality and I didn't feel comfortable putting it on my channel. So if you want, I will put it out on Instagram and you can follow me there to see that video pretty soon. I'll see you guys next time. Stay safe.